Hey everybody, I'm EPH, and let's talk about some tips and tricks for Factory Town for the early game. Now, the early game to me is text one through three. I will also be doing a tips and tricks for the mid game, which is to me four through seven, and then the late game, which is eight, nine, and 10. Just a disclosure, I have done a lot of prep work in order to get ready for this tips and tricks. I have done all the research kind of going forward, and I'm not gonna cover some of the basics of the game as I'm assuming that since you're here for tips and tricks, you have already started playing the game, but you're looking for th some things that you maybe didn't know. Uh, so I will leave some timestamps down below just to kind of direct you to some areas. And from here, the purpose of this tips and tricks, this is things that I wish I knew going from the campaign into the sandbox mode. And some of it I picked up relatively quickly. Some of it I had to stop my games and actually go back, start over and kind of go from there. That is the premise of where I'm coming from. So things that we're going to cover in this, we're going to cover, we're going to start with the area of control because this is a huge thing and it does not go over this at all anywhere in the, the campaign and I think this is something that you really need to know in order to help your late game. We're going to go over some production locations. We're going to go through logistics, happiness, water, and, and lastly we're going to finish with some, some farming tips kind of moving forward. So starting out, area of control. It is it is very important for the game. And the first area of control that you have is your town hall. And you can see that this area is big. You can see that it's linked to 18 houses and I'm ready to upgrade it. And as I upgrade it, you will see that the area of control gets a little bit bigger. In the early game, this is probably not as important as in the late game, but you can see it gets big. And we are now level four for our town hall. Now the town hall can get up to level 10. So you saw this go from right around here to right around here at level 10 it is past the water that is huge and that kind of goes for the houses as well they get up to level 10 in the end game but that's like uh, off the track of area of control in area of control things that are kind of affected by that i guess it would be area of control and service range is in the early game you have three buildings that are affected by this the general store the food market and the school and let me kind of go over how this affects this uh let's uh extend a road out a little bit further past these trees. We'll just kind of put it over here and let's build a school. And I'm, I'm placing it specifically over here because there's a lot of trees. And as you can see within the zone of control of the, the school are only six houses. But if I build it, what you'll see is that it is connected to all 18. And that is because anything that is linked by the town center is linked to all of its houses. The town center supersedes the school's area of control. This is something that I wish I knew in the early game. This means that I could place a food market on an edge and have it cover on the other edge the houses. That is pretty big because originally when I started the game, I was placing all of my, my service buildings in the center of town and I was running logistics in. This means that you can run for your school. Let me cover this real quick. For your school, uh, in the early game, you're going to be producing paper, which is produced via the lumber mill. Uh, so we can build a lumber mill and uh, we can plop it right there. We can can feed it with a forester and we're just going to plop that up here. We can connect this via conveyors, kind of get this going. Here we can again get it connected, well, shoots for the logs and conveyors for the, the paper themselves. Let's go ahead and get paper in production and we'll configure this up for paper. Now I will be doing water in a little bit later, but I will connect water now just to kind of get the paper production up and going uh, so we can get this uh, as paper as well. Let's go ahead and connect it via path. Oh, right now it's outside the area of the town, so it's not actually being affected by it, but it looks like it's enough in there maybe that it's being affected by happiness, which is amazing. And we'll cover that later. So we're going to place some, some wells here. And the nice thing about wells, once you kind of get to level three, you unlock pipes. Again, we're going to cover this a little bit further a little bit later on, but by hitting G, you go to the underground and in your tabs down here hit fluid pipes just start at one of your wells go up to the last well bring it over and it will pipe your water over without needing to be connected to people without a person transporting it again we're going to cover water later on as i connect them over to the houses but you can take a look and you can see we are now getting our input in our our water and it is producing paper which is now going to our town i do want to crank this up a little bit so that we are we're going a little quicker and i do want to i'm going to turn this now you can turn this by hitting the m to move or by 
by clicking on it, you can hit the R and it allows you to uh, turn it. I guess that's a little bit of a bonus during this uh, section of area of control, service area, however you want to put it. But I do want to increase this up so that we, we get some lumber production and kind of get our, our paper back up and going and get our, our tech points back up. I uh, cannot stress this enough. You will need tons and tons and tons of tech points. But taking a look, you can see that these buildings way out here are getting researched. That is that is amazing. I wish I really knew that in the early game. Uh, all right, I'm, I'm done with that section. Now let's talk about some production locations. So this area is precious to me, and there is a lot of things that are needed in the early game, planks being one of them. So I don't wish to build within this range, and you are not limited to building within this range. As you can see, this one is outside of, and with that being outside of it, I'm going to pick an area kind of far away from my town, and I'm going to build a lumber mill, and I'm going to place it right here. I'm going to build a barn. Again, this is not something that has gone over kind of well in the game, but you can upgrade the barn. And the first upgrade brings it to 100. The next upgrade brings it to 150. They go all the way up to 250. And that means the storage for your barn maxes out at 1,000. Now, for this, I'm going to go ahead and configure this. I, I want the first spot to be wood, the next spot to be wood planks, the spot after this to be wheels, and the next spot to be wooden conveyors. And we're going to store these items in this particular uh, barn. To get that going, I'm just going to place... So if a building is touching, I find it easier to place a conveyor. If it is not touching, and it can use a chute, chutes are quicker than conveyors, but to configure out a, a chute when it's right next door, why? Oh, this is a lumber mill, not a forester. Let me get rid of that. Well, I guess I'll move it because we will be using that shortly, but I do want a forester up here first. That was a, not the type of mistake that you want to make in a tips and jerks uh, uh, beginner's guide. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's increase this so it starts filling up. For our lumber mill, well, I guess it kind of goes hand in hand. We need planks, we need our wheels, and we need our conveyor. So it starts with your lumber mill, where again, we're just going to place it two away just to make it simpler on placing chutes. Chutes only take planks, which is pretty easy. We're just going to get them coming across. I'm just going to hire up some more workers so we get some, we get the output kind of maxed out. Probably five's about right. And now we need a workstation. And this is going to be producing our wheels and our conveyors. So we just need, again, planks right here. That will kind of get that going. We want a conveyor because uh, the, the planks cannot go down a chute because they're not round. And we need to get our logs over here in order to get our wheels and our conveyors. And particularly, I believe it's the wooden conveyors require some wood. So we're just going to connect those both up. And we're going to put some conveyors over here. Kind of connect some things. And we're going to place a conveyor right there. And then I have to get a conveyor conveyor this way. Now you're going, but how is this conveyor going to work? And the answer is quite easily. You go to your logistics. So go open your build menu, go to logistics block, you grab a grabber and you place your grabber there and it, it autos to planks and it will start the production. So even though the, the conveyor is not directly coming out of it, like you would think, it will still attach to it. And so for getting our, our lumber, our wood over to here, this is also kind of simple and it's not explained very well. We're going to use first our wooden pillars because we have to get up above this conveyor and then we are going to use our scaffold something about like that and then taking our chute just hit your r key to kind of rotate it the way you want it place your first one and then you can drag and drop the rest of them and it will get the log production kind of going over there and then we just have to configure up our, our blocks here for wooden conveyor and for our wheel now in the near future what i would recommend is putting a farm over here for cotton and i don't have enough coins at the moment to do this and what i would do at that point in time is i would produce the cloth conveyors here. At some point in time when you move to metal, that is later on in the game, I'll I'll cover this again in the next tips and tricks, you're going to want to switch this off of making wooden conveyors and cloth conveyors. Now cloth conveyors are probably about 25% quicker than wooden conveyors. It is noticeable, but that kind of covers how I do my, my production locations of my essential items that I need, is I put them outside of my town so that they are not affecting it. This is actually a really good location because if you you're going to build wooden rails. You're going to use your stone from over here to, to build your wooden rails. So this is actually a really good spot to do this. Now for wooden rails, yes, we do require wooden rails in order to progress to the next level, which is why we're going to build them. Uh, but I personally do not use wooden rails. I do not use metal rails. I do not use magical rails. I personally, I like the aesthetic of the train. I just do not use the train. If it's in the same space as a train, you can place a conveyor and a conveyor will 
run all the time and the rough cost of a conveyor is roughly the same as what it would be to create the rails so unfortunately i just default to it aesthetically though the train is is a lot is a lot better so we kind of covered logistics in this section too so i really meant for logistics kind of be its own part and so i'll probably label it in the in the the title uh, production location and logistics is like one title as we covered how logistics works in like a very short way kind of here now let's talk about some happiness uh so every house has happiness and so if you double click on the building you're going to see that it needs water some basic food some hardware some clothes some basic medicine it needs education which is getting which is where we're getting our 18 happiness from and we've got some some gourmet items and some magical items now i've played the game all the way to the end game and i can tell you that food you only need to get six happiness from food and this is something that is not well explained so in this list you can see that grain gives one happiness flour gives one happiness there are some things like cheese and butter that give two uh, but the reality behind this is is i was forming towns around having every single item on here but i was only getting six happiness and i was running out of workers before i was able to finish all my production lines uh the re the reality is you only need to produce this number of food happiness in order to satisfy your workers so you can pick and choose from whatever you want to do to get that food happiness. Same goes with hardware. There's a, a little bit of a shorter list. Uh, total happiness, I believe for hardware, might be four at level 10. Clothes is three, and clothes is really easy to get. Basic medicine is, I believe, three or four, and it's kind of easy to get. Education's really easy to get. Gourmet is super easy to get. My go-to is producing the three jams, uh, apple, berry, and, and pear jam at the same facility. We'll be covering this in the mid-game as unlocking the tavern is kind of more mid game and getting into sort of gourmet is there all two happiness is definitely in the mid game magical medicine is towards the late game and these kind of towards the late games so we really don't need to cover that but happiness is important because your max happiness increases your max housing so as we hit 120 uh, happiness we will be able to go to the next level and if you click on your town hall you will see that these houses at their current level have a maximum happiness of 282 which means you could easily hit this with the houses at their level that they're at right now so that's that is happiness in a nutshell i will be going over i will probably do three tutorials early mid and late game and then i will probably go over happiness in depth uh, the next part of the tutorial is water and i touched on it a little bit earlier but we're going to really touch on it now and water is something Again, it's not explained real well, but for this many this many houses, I probably need four wells later on with a, a water pump. It becomes much easier. And again, we're just going to press G to go to the, the underground. And I, I have 186 pipes, which should be enough. But we're just going to drag a pipe to this road right here. I think that's a good spot. You're going to see the water is going to start flowing. I'm just going to drag it to this house, and then I'm going to subsequently drag it to each house along the chain. Unfortunately, there's a couple of ways of doing this you can drag the pipe the entire way uh, i guess i'll do that over here where i drag the the pipe the entire way and you see it only drops this one here so you can put a, a connector here and here via the connector and it works the same, or you can do like I do. I just find it easier to stop at every house and just kind of create the connector that way. It's up to you as to how you do it, but you can see we already have our water backing up on this side. And if we go back into the overworld, you can see they are full on their on their water. That is easy peasy. Um, and that is water in a nutshell. It is you no workers to move around that water. You can see we, we just literally went from 18 happiness to 34 happiness without adding a single worker all we did was place in the wells and placed in the pipe to go with it a water pump probably probably maintains around once you get to steam power this is again late game once you get to steam power and you get a water pump it probably maintains around 20 to 25 houses so it's base wise more efficient but it requires steam power in order to kind of make it work all right from here we're going to talk about some farming as farming is your best way to get some early game coins and coins are much needed in the game i intend 
until probably around tech level five or six, I find that I'm completely starved of yellow coin. And farming is your best way of getting yellow coins in particularly, and it is a good way of getting red coins. So coins in a nutshell, yellow coins, this is with some exceptions, yellow coins are food items. Red coins are your, your items used for crafting. So uh, think of yarn for knitting is a crafting item. Uh, if for you woodworkers out there, planks, there are some other things, wheels for hobbyists. Uh, there, That's your red coins. Your blue coins are medical items, band-aids, ointments, things like that. Your purple coins are magical items. Uh, so that kind of goes into kind of where we're going with this. So farming in a nutshell. Uh, so we want a farm and we're going to place it kind of up here. And I'm and part of why I'm doing farming is because it, it pertains a lot to happiness. And so we're going to go there and we're going to get this, this cotton. Yes, I have played the game a little bit. So you're going to see that there's maybe a little bit more in this than would typically be. And that is because I wanted to, to kind of get a good uh, start on this. I do want to connect these with paths because at some point in time, uh, speaking of that, they're, they are within the area of the town. And which means they're affected by happiness. Now, 34 happiness is giving us a 20% boost to production, which is huge. I cannot stress that enough. And because, again, the area control is so big, I'm just going to put a food market about a space away from the farm just to give it a, a, a area for the shoot to kind of work correctly without needing too much configuring it. And for space saving purposes, I'm going to put another shoot on top of this up here. And, and that will allow me to to have extra space for more farms as I kind of go along. And what I want to do is I want to increase my workers until I'm seeing a good production of sugar going out. And at that point in time, I, I'm just gonna call this this good and we're gonna move on to the next one. And maybe maybe we'll go with 10 workers for now. And then I'll come back and revisit that. We'll do something similar here. We're just gonna go ahead and connect it up via a footpath. And I just want a food market in here. And the reason that I'm going with multiple food markets I guess I should explain this. If you have to run a conveyor all the way from one to the other, that is from here to here, you are covering maybe 40 to 50 tiles where the food market only sits on a three by three, which is only nine tiles. So spending the little bit of money or materials to build your food market right next to your farm goes a long way in space saving. And I'm just going to do the same thing right here where I just filled it up a little bit to kind of get a little extra. And then I'm going to adjust the, the, the farm itself to kind of have some more workers. I really like farms with maximum. Your farm can handle a few props. So like this one, I would probably place something else with it. Same with over here. This one's producing sugar. I'd maybe produce herbs with it and do that would give me two food sources. This would give me two food sources. I would only need one more in order to get the max happiness, but you can already see that we're up to 70 happiness. That goes a long way. And we're going to do the same over here with a general store. We're just going to, I do want to place a road over there. I'm going to place it on this side right here. We'll place in our, our connector. And since we're up to 70 happiness, I'm just going to take a quick look. So 70 happiness gives us the 30% yield. Now for this, you're going to notice that, oh, let's place the, the shoot down first. So you're going to notice that it doesn't come with the logistics. And that's because again, they're only one apart. So you have to add your logistics from the build menu and you just add your grabber. Oh, it added it up on top. Let's try that again. I, I forget to not place the, the scaffold team before, but we're just going to do the same thing as what we've been doing, which is vertically building for space saving. And we're just going to increase that up. And you're going to notice that the the you're gonna notice that the happiness just kind of soars through the roof now my last tip and trick of the day i'm not going to include this in the in the description down below is something that i recommend to every player of the game play the game the way you wish to play it don't let somebody tell you how to play the game i have i have been kind of in this this dispute lately with some some people who have been telling me how to play some games as well as they've been telling some friends how to play the game so i'm going to tell you guys right now my last tip and trick of the day is enjoy the game you want the way you want to that means when somebody tells you hey you have to do this stop listening to them and with that this concludes my tips and tricks for the early game i hope this helps you guys out and we'll come back in probably the next couple days with a mid game where we cover again technologies four five six and seven and we kind of go over some tips and tricks for that as well we'll probably revisit some happiness in that as we're going to cover some production chains and some things in there thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next episode